dunes, sand ripples, heat, and harsh windy conditions. What do all these things have in common? They are all characteristics of aeolian environments. Aeolian environments are those of which deposits are made up of mainly wind-blown sediments and are commonly found in desert environments. But what is a desert environment? The desert is a continental area that receives less than 250 millimeters of precipitation a year. Though we commonly think of deserts as hot and arid environments, they can also be located at higher latitudes and host much colder conditions. Modern deserts currently cover about 6% of the global land surface. Deserts are host to an aeolian environments because the dry sediments that make them up are ideal for wind transport. An, Aeo an aeolian sedimentary process is any process that involves the movement and transportation of sediment by wind. Another key aspect of deserts which allows for the success of aeolian processes is the lack of vegetation. Less vegetation means the sediment is less stable and therefore easier to move via wind. Deserted areas are dominated by sand and can cover up to 125 square kilometers. These large areas are often called sand seas or ERCs. These large areas are home to wind deposited sedimentary structures of many different shapes and sizes, but more on that later. You are probably wondering where all this sand is coming from. The source of sand that feed aeolian environments come in many forms, much like aeolian environments themselves. Aeolian environments can be found along coastlines, far inland, or near glacial outwashes. Because of this, sand is sourced from fluvial environments such as ephemeral streams and floodplains, which fall dry part of the year, and from glacial deposits, such as ice melts. For this reason, patches of aeolian sand may also contain depositional structures from fluvial, alluvial, and glacial environments, such as ephemeral lakes and streams that have gone dry. Though these may all occur, they are generally small in comparison. These structures will appear intermingled with aeolian deposits or vice versa, making them all a part of an arid zone species association. Sediments found in aeolian systems can be coastal sands with mixes of biogenic compounds and lithogenous compounds or solely lithogenous sediments. Coastal biogenous sediments are more common in dune fields near the coast. Dunes located more inland will have a scarcity of fossils due to the harsh conditions provided by the desert. Many animals and plants cannot live in the areas with high levels of aeolian processes. Because of this, the interdune area is the most favorable location for the accumulation of fossils due to the occasional rain that saturates this area. Sometimes larger animal bones will be left behind or trace fossils of the footprints will be found in the interdune area, though both are rare. Not only are there few organisms that live in these areas, but the highly oxidizing conditions of the desert often result in total decomposition. The lithology of sediments found in aeolian environments share some key characteristics. Sands found in aeolian environments and sandstones are commonly well-rounded, well-sorted, and have frosted surfaces. A frosted grain will appear dull rather than reflective or shiny under a microscope. The numerous collisions between grains during wind transport causes this frosting. Aeolian sands are also commonly red or yellow due to the oxidation of iron, creating a ferric iron coating on the outside of the grain, commonly referred to as desert varnish. However, color cannot be used to identify aeolian sediment, as red sand is not unique to the only desert environments. Though these characteristics of aeolian sands are helpful, they alone cannot be used to identify sedimentary rocks of aeolian descent. We must instead look at the bigger picture. To do this, we turn to modern deserts and observe their common sedimentary structures. Marine and aeolian environments have similar sedimentary truck structures, so in order to differentiate between the two, we look for the presence of other terrigenous environments and features. 
occurring intermingled or adjacent to the area to prove aeolian origin. The law of Unitarianism tells us that the processes that are occurring on Earth today also occurred in the past. We can use this law to help us identify ancient aeolian sandstones by observing modern aeolian environments. As you know by now, aeolian environments are dictated by wind. The global wind patterns are ultimately driven by temperature differences between the equator and the poles. Large air masses circle the globe, rising at the equator where the gas is heated and moved towards the poles, where the chilled air will sink and repeat. Each hemisphere's wind direction is deflected by the Coriolis effect caused by the Earth's rotation. This concentration of heat and wind near the equator, called the intertropical convergence zone, creates the perfect conditions for a desert environment. For this reason, modern deserts mostly appear within 40 degrees of the equator and on the western side of the landmass. Some winds are affected by large topographical landmarks, such as mountain ranges. When warm winds reach the edge of the mountain, they are forced upward and subsequently cooled. A similar event happens when warm air is blown over the ice caps. This rapid chilling results in the cabatic winds, or strong cold air masses that move down mountain slopes or off the edge of ice masses. Though most chemists would argue differently, air regarding sediment transport behaves like a fluid, even creating many similar structures to water-driven environments. Wind moves sediment by traction, saltation, and suspension. Much higher velocities for wind are required to move sediments because of the low density of air. Air has a density of 1.3 kilograms per cubic meter. With such a low density at 30 meters per second, which is the average strength of a strong wind over land, it is only capable of moving at largest a half a millimeter in diameter quartz grain. Wind is the main agent of erosion in the desert. Though it is much less effective than water, wind can move loose sediments in any environment given dry enough conditions. Wind is most effective at moving small sediments, such as silts and clays often moving them vast distances. Transport by wind is possible when wind strength rises and meets the fluid threshold. When wind is at or greater than this threshold and meets the leading edge of a deposit of loose material, it can dislodge sediments and move them. This process is exasperated by mobile grains knocking into less susceptible ones and dislodging them into motion. The rapidity of grain dislodgement depends on grain size, shape, sorting, and packing of the sediment deposit. Wind is a very effective sorting mechanism due to its low viscosity, which makes it harder to move in a larger range of grain sizes. Wind separates sediments finer than 0.05 millimeters from coarser grains because it can carry these finer grains in suspension, while larger grains are moved along by saltation and traction. This creates three kinds of aeolian deposits. Clay and silt side deposits are referred to as less. Less locally occurs in beds that can be several meters thick. The fine grains are easily moved large distances by wind and are continually reworked. Less deposits make up roughly 10% of the Earth's land surface and make up a large portion of the Midwestern United States. The origin of less is related to the retreat of glacial ice sheets. Large amounts of loose detritus were carried in the ice and released. In cold, paraglacial environments, the repopulation of vegetation would have been slow, making for a large amount of fine-grade sediments available for aeolian processing. Though making up a large portion of aeolian deposits, the nature of this fine-grained sediment makes it very hard to preserve. Lag deposits, which are gravel-sized sediments that are too large to be picked up by the wind, form a deflation pavement in areas where erosion is greater than deposition. These deposits can be found interbedded with the remnants of sand dunes as they migrate across the desert. And lastly, sand deposits, which accumulate into ergs, dune fields, and ripples. Ergs can be thought of as a collection of dunes and make up a large part of the desert environment. Ripples and dunes are formed by the same depositional process and are different only by a matter of scale. 
Ripples are a height between 1 cm and 10 cm, while dunes are between 3 meters and 600 meters in height. For the purpose of better explaining the depositional process that forms dunes and ripples, I will stick to describing only dunes, though this process is the same for ripple formation. To put it plainly, a dune is a hill of sand deposited by wind. Dunes generally occur in colonies or fields and are found in flat areas of the desert, where there is large amount of loose sand which has accumulated into one area. Dunes form from the gradual saltation and creep movements of sediments that are too large to be moved by suspension. These sediments are moved up the windward side, also known as the stoss slope. The sediments will continue to move the forward slope until the top angle reaches about 34 degrees. At this point, the sediment will no longer be well supported and will avalanche down the lee or slip face side. This continued process of avalanching deposit sediments is what causes cross-bedding in sedimentary rocks. This migration erodes old dunes and leaves behind cross-bedding in a mostly horizontal layer. Dunes migrate in the direction of the wind and will maintain a constant shape when wind conditions remain constant. The formation of cross-bedding allows geologists to analyze paleo-wind patterns. As the cross-bedding of alien dunes will fall at an angle toward the propagating wind, we can predict the directionality of the wind when the sand was deposited. Wind direction is typically described by the direction that it traveled from, such as south or southwest. Flutes and flute casts are also indicators of unidirectional currents. Flutes form from turbulent currents, often how wind behaves. Flutes form from the scouring of the surface layers of sediment, creating a V-shaped impression. Over time, these impressions will grow. When flutes are filled with sediment and lithified, the opposite side is called the flute cast. Though flutes can be used to identify paleocurrent, they also form in other turbulent environments and, not can be, and cannot be used as an identifier for aeolian deposition. Another and more prominent structure in aeolian environments is dunes. Dunes can form in different structures. What type forms is largely dictated by the directionality of the wind. One type is barkhand dunes. They are crescent-shaped sand mounds which occur as isolated bodies or in colonies or chains. These are created by a unidirectional wind and will migrate by avalanching sand on the slip face side. The horn of the dune extends forward, creating a crescent shape because it moves more rapidly than the rest of the dune body. The increased speed of this portion is due to the increased surface area of this part of the dune face. Steep dunes, also called linear dunes, are elongated, almost straight sand ridges. The long axis is oriented parallel to the prevailing wind direction. Sand ridges are continuous and serrated. These dunes will occur as a series of long parallel ridges. The formations of these dunes is disputed. Some say that they are formed by strong winds blowing at a quarter, while others say that they form from two converging winds which interact at a 90 degree angle from one another. The cross budding of these dunes are characterized by lamination down both faces. Transverse dunes, almost straight sand ridges oriented at right angles to the predominant wind direction. They have regularly spaced ridges separated by large interdune areas. Some argue that transverse dunes are highly unstable and will eventually break up into Barkhan and linear dunes. However, some say that they are stable due to their predominance in many desert areas. It is believed that transverse dunes are more commonly found in areas that were once shallow lakes, which would dampen the surface of the sand and inhibit the formation of the horn structure found in bark hands. Star dunes are sand ridges with a high central point and three or more converging arm ridges. Star dunes are formed in areas where multiple wind directions converge. These dunes will have cross bedding in multiple directions due to their multiple slip faces. A few other dune types, though less common, are Parabolic dunes have U-shaped ridges with a concave face in the wind direction. They are also associated with blowouts. 
in the center of the dune. These dunes most commonly occur in vegetated areas and, are main, and remain fairly stable. Dome-shaped dunes are low circular ridges formed by strong, unchecked prevailing winds. The rapid movement of the wind results in low angled slip facing and almost no chance for the sediments to increase with much height. And finally, reversing dunes. These dunes take the shape of barkhan or transverse dunes. However, they barely migrate and can change direction based on season, sometimes going in the opposite direction which they started, giving them their name. Each of these dunes has a unique internal structure and creates unique crossbedding. If one or any combination of these crossbedding structures are found, an aeolian depositional environment can be assumed. Through studying modern aeolian environments, we can more easily identify aeolian environments of the past. The identification of aeolian sandstones is important not only for having a better understanding of how a location's environment has changed over geologic time, but identifying one could potentially be lucrative for its identifier. Due to the high porosity, high permeability, and lightly cemented grains of aeolian sandstones, they can be great locations for aquifers or hydrocarbon reservoirs. Though uncommon, tectonic movement can bring aeolian sandstones in contact with organic rich source beds. This is seen in the several oil fields throughout Utah and Wyoming. Thanks for watching. I hope you were blown away by aeolian depositional environments.